Today I'm gonna to show you how to install vinyl plank flooring. I'm gonna be putting in some brand new vinyl plank flooring into this bathroom that I'm currently renovating. I'm gonna walk you through how to get the site all prepared and ready to install. Then we're gonna work on the layout, how to get the perfect layout so that you don't end up with a bunch of odd pieces and small strips towards the end of the installation. And then as we get going, I'll show you some tips and tricks on how to get this stuff snapping together nice and tight. As we encounter obstacles, we'll look at the best way to cut this stuff and finish it off nicely. Then we're gonna have a look at how to properly finish it along a bathtub the transition into the carpeted area. And then finally, I'm gonna show you a couple of crafty little tricks on how to get that last row in without a struggle. Step one, read the installation manual. And then when it comes to site prep, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your subfloor is nice and flat. In my case, I was going over an existing tile. There was some dips and as well as a big quarter inch grout line. So I decided to cover over that with some self-leveling concrete. If you wanna see that process, I'll link that video at the end here. You also wanna remove any of your baseboards unless you're gonna do some type of a shoe molding. And then it's a perfect time to undercut any doorways that you're gonna encounter for the installation. You can use a little scrap piece of flooring and a little pull cut saw, or in my case, I had a nice oscillating tool, which makes short work of the process. Once you've got that undercut, you can install the channel that the transition is gonna clip into. So for this, you can cut that metal channel with some side cutters and then just bend it and snap it works nice or a hacksaw. So in order to locate where you need to install that little metal channel, I like to cut myself a little piece of the transition strip. Then I can butt it right into the door jam and then pencil on a line where the metal channel goes. And for my case, because I was going over tile, I decided to glue that on with some Peel Premium. Now with that glue, you're gonna to wanna to rough up the back of the metal channel and wipe it off with some methyl hydrate just to take any of the grease off of the metal and that's gonna ensure a lot better bond. And then when it comes to gluing, I just put the PL Premium down on both sides, onto the floor, onto the metal channel, set it down. I put some weights on there just to hold it down and you'll need to let that set up overnight. Things are looking pretty good. Just gonna give the floor a quick vacuum. You wanna vacuum up any of the dirt and debris. That can get caught into the tongue and groove and making it hard to get the stuff snapping together properly. And it's just kind of a bush league move to go over top of a dirty floor. So we'll clean that up and then we'll talk layout. Now, generally speaking, you wanna run the flooring along the longest wall of the room. And with this type of flooring, you have to always start left to right. So it's best to start on the longest, straightest section that way you can get things going nice and parallel and straight off the bat. To figure out what size width board you need to start with, I like to just assume that I'll start with a full width piece and then I just pencil across the layout of each piece all the way across the room. That way you can see what's gonna happen when you run into that cabinet over there on the right and the far wall. In my case here, if I were to start with a full piece, I'm gonna be left with a one inch strip at the very end and it's gonna be a little awkward around that water pipe. So I'm gonna adjust my first strip. I'm gonna take two inches off the first strip. That's gonna leave about a three inch strip when I get over to the far side. And it's gonna allow me to just make a nice little U-shaped piece to connect across that water pipe. At this point here, I'd like to put a straight reference line one row back off of my starting row. That's gonna help you get everything set straight as well. It's really handy if you need to fit that first row to anything. In this case, I have to fit it along the bathtub. I'll set that row along the reference line and then I'll take another full piece of scrap material and I can scribe out a perfect mark onto the first row. In terms of cutting the vinyl plank flooring, you can cut it with a utility knife, snap it, and then cut through the rest of it. I prefer to just use my table saw. I'll cross cut all the pieces with the miter gauge and then anything lengthwise I can cut on there as well. You can cut it on a miter saw. It is pretty hard on your regular wood blades. So I just use an old blade and I cut everything on the table saw. And then for the first row, you're also gonna need some shims to hold it off the wall for the expansion. I just used some quarter inch scrap wood, chopped it up on the table saw, and then along the tub, I'm only gonna shim it off an eighth of an inch to allow for a nicer finish. Take your time here, make sure you have all your shims in place and the row is nice and solid. It's been real, we're on to row number two, let's talk pattern. What you want to avoid here, do not do a brick pattern. That looks horrible. Brick pattern is just like full piece, half piece, full piece. What I recommend is doing some type of a stagger with thirds. So for this bathroom, I went full piece, two thirds, one third, back to two thirds, full piece, one third, full. 
And then keep in mind when you cut all the starter pieces, save the other end and just stack them down at the other side and you can use those to finish off the runs. I'll also quickly mention, before you get rolling on the bulk of the floor, open up all the packages and mix the flooring together. And then as you get going, keep in mind that you want to match up the end grains of the boards so there's not any jarring color changes. Now we're working into the second row and let's talk about the exact way to fit this stuff together without a giant struggle. Always want to be installing into the longer tongue that's sitting along the bottom and you're installing the shorter tongue of the piece. So you want to take that piece, slide it in towards the piece that is already down until it butts into the end. As you're dropping the piece down, you want to put a little more horizontal pressure in just so that it can kind of seat nicely lengthwise along the other piece. Drop it down and then just with your fingers, just tighten up that end joint. You don't want to tap it down with the block just yet. Now that it's laying down, you want to take like a tapping block. I have a little wood tapping block that I made with a little notch. Take the block and then along the length, I find in three spots kind of works the best. Tap it together and you'll see that last little bit of a uh, gap snap together. It's very satisfying. Now that that long piece is all snapped together towards the other one, you want to come back to the end part of the board where it was butting into the existing board. Take the tapping block, set it on top, and then just tap that together nicely. Check it with your fingers. Make sure there's no sharp edges still sticking up. When it comes to marking out the piece for the end, I'll just grab one of the off-cut pieces from the starters and then spin it around, butt it into a shim, and then make a pencil mark and cut accordingly. And then when it comes to marking out for obstacles, I primarily use the same method. I'll get the piece cut to length. I'll lay it where it needs to go. Then I'll mark out where I need to cut. And then in terms of cutting this stuff, for any kind of a notch, a jigsaw is gonna be the best way to go here. Cruising along here, and this is actually kind of the fun part of doing the flooring where things are happening very rapidly. Now, as you get closer to the other side, we're running into the cabinet here. You can turn your hammer sideways and squeak out one more row. But at some point, real quick, it's going to get too tight for the hammer. Now, I've done a lot of installation jobs in the past where I just kind of pried the last piece into place, but definitely recommend getting one of these little uh, flooring installation bars. I'll put an Amazon link in the description for this bar that I'm using here. In order to cut out for the toilet flange, I recommend, again, just cutting the pieces to length that are going to go around the flange. Lay them out in front of it make a mark in the center of the flange and then transfer that mark onto the flooring. And then in order to get the circle drawn on there, I'm just using a compass. You can make your own out of like a nail and a pencil and a piece of wire or string. Magical fit around the toilet flange. We'll pop in the last row notched around the water pipe. And then let me show you how to finish off the transition strip. And as well, we'll look at how to get a really nice finish along where the flooring butts into the tub. So cut your transition strip to length. I just cross cut mine on the table saw again, but a miter saw would probably be easier to make a nice cut. When it comes to installing, just start at one side, work it into that little um, channel groove with your hand. You might need to get a little bit of fist action there and just pop it into place as you go along. Once you've got it basically set the distance, grab the wood block and the hammer and then just drive it all the way down. And then finally, that ugly gap along where the flooring meets into the bathtub. There's not really a transition strip that you can get for that. So what I recommend using is some caulking. You could use white because the bathtub's white, but it's not going to look great. What I recommend doing is finding some stuff that matches up pretty closely to the floor. I found some beige caulking at the Home Depot. And now to get this on nice and neat, I totally recommend taping off the bathtub and the floor. It's gonna save a lot of hassle. The last thing you wanna do here is make a giant mess on your nice floor that you've just put in. Cut a decent sized tip on the caulking tube. I like to put a little orientation line on the top just so I can get it installed nicely. Wipe off as much of the caulking as you can while the tape is still there and then peel the tape back. And then I like to take some warm soapy water and just smooth it over a couple of times to make sure it looks nice and neat. And there you go. Elvis has left the building and he's not wearing any pants.